This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, a new day, Lord. Brand new mercies, Father God. I thank you for your loving kindness, Lord, for your good plans. I thank you for redemption, Lord God. I thank you for love. And I thank you for transforming power, oh God. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father God, which you sent to lead us, Lord, to comfort us, Father God, to empower us, to reveal things for us, to teach us, Father God, and to convict us, Father God. Lord, in all things, I give you thanks, Father God. And I thank you for the glory that is to come in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So um, as I was getting ready today, the Holy Spirit was just showing me stuff and kind of like ministering to me. And um, Lord, where do I begin? Holy Spirit, help me to get this out the way that you gave it to me in Jesus' name. All right. So um, the message is that, or the concept is that we are transformers with God. Together, we partner with God. Well, first of all, we know that there are two kingdoms, right? There's um, God's kingdom, which is the good. And then there is Satan's kingdom, which is evil, okay? And um, we partner, when we become born again and birthed into God's kingdom, when our life is redeemed, we become partners with Jesus Christ to transform the evil in the world to good, to transform the evil to good. Our bodies, our vessels, we are transformers. The Holy Spirit in us is that activating power that allows us to transform things. And what God was, what the Holy Spirit was showing me, um, I thought of several things actually. Um, the message is called weight check. I remember one day when I was in the kitchen and I was going through a period of time where, you know, I was thinking the things that God has shown me, the dreams and visions that he gave me and the reality of the situation, they weren't matching what God had showed me and told me and, and therefore promised me was not matching what I was going through. And inside I was crying inside, I, you know, inside, if, if it wasn't for restraint, I would have been like a child crying. So, you know, I was saying, no, I'm not going to cry because then, um, you know, it's going to show like a lack of faith in God. So I'm not going to do that. Even though inside that's, that's kind of how I was, that's how I wanted to be, but I was just restrained and I wouldn't let it out. Right. So one day I'm in the kitchen and Sophia asked me for something. That's my four-year-old. She asked me for something. And I think I was supposed to be cooking her something. And she said, it's taking too long. It's taking too long. I'm hungry. You see it. But... And she started kind of like um, crying. And I looked at her and I was like, oh, Lord. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to look like that. I'm not going to look like that. And immediately Isaiah 55, 8, 9 popped in my head, right? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. So it's heaven is higher than the earth. So my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. And I was like, I was thinking it, I didn't know that the Holy Spirit was telling me you look at her and you know, you get aggravated or frustrated with her because she doing that. But God was telling me, that's not how I think of you. That's not how I'm, that's not how I, I perceive when you cry out to me. That's not how I perceive it. So that flashed in my mind this morning. And then there was this idea, he was, he was, he was, um, you know, I picture somebody in the gym, you know, when they pumping weights and if they pumping weights, it's easy for them. You know, they pumping it with ease. It's easy. It's no, it's no strain. It's no pain. You know, they just pumping with ease. And then, um, it was like this man and he was pumping weights. And when you pumping something that's really, or when he was pumping something that was really heavy, it's like, Urgh! and then, you know, there's the, you see the, the arms shaking and all this stuff or whatever. And that indicates that what it is, is heavy. It's heavy. There's strain. There is tension. There is great effort going into trying to lift it. Right. So, God was, I also picture, um, like different people offering up things to God and, and it was like, he like, okay, that match. And then it's like, some people nah, that don't match. Uh, uh, you know, like the weights, they didn't match. And so I thought about Job, right? The Holy spirit had me think about Job. Basically what God was saying is that I know what I've allowed you to be test it. I know what I've allowed to come your way. Just like Job, when Satan had to ask for permission 
to, um, to test Job's faith. He had to get permission first and God knew the magnitude. He knew the magnitude of the things he allowed Satan to do. He knew what kind of results it should produce in Job, right? You know, like in the, um, uh, somewhere in Hebrews, it say, you know, we have not a high priest who is not able to empathize with us, that Jesus is able to empathize with us because he was here and he experienced every temptation, yet he's seeing not. So he knows what it's like to be in this flesh, in this decaying, sinful world, and what it's like for us to go through different experiences. He's, he knows what it's like. He knows what kind of pain and agony and distress and or bitterness or anger. He's familiar with those things. He knows what our test should be drawing out of us, right? So um, it was like this um, vision where, let's just say Job, for example. Job's children were killed or, you know, they died in disaster, in disastrous ways. His animals were, were smitten and they died. He lost all of his riches. So imagine Job, all of this has happened to him, right? And not immediately, but eventually he starts to mourn or eventually he starts to cry. And when he do it, it's not even like an agonizing um, morning. It's not, it's not an agony that he comes to God, but maybe it's in, and it's in great restraint. Like, like, you know, as if to say, as if in denial that something is really bothering him or as if in denial of the impact that those calamities have, has really had on me. Like me, when I was in the kitchen and I was looking at Sophia and I was like, nah, I ain't about to, I ain't about, I felt that way inside. I really did. I was crying out inside, but I just wouldn't let it out. I was restraining it. I wouldn't let it out. So, um, I feel like I'm being long winded, but the Holy spirit, basically what I'm getting from the visions and things is that there are some people where life has hit you in certain ways. And instead of bringing it all to God and instead of coming to God first, you making like these pit stops. Okay. So let's just say God allowed the enemy to put a, a, a burden of, um, of distress or agony or evil on your shoulders. That's about, um, a hundred pounds. Let's say the enemy hits you with the weight of a hundred pounds. Okay. So when you get hit with this hundred pounds, let's say, you know, you call your mom first and talk about it. Let's say you drink some alcohol first to vent, or you smoke some weed or, you know, you go shopping or you go, you gossip or, you know, you eat some of the pain away or, you know, some of the, mm -hmm. some of the weight of it away. So not only by the time you get to God, your weight is off because you didn't disperse some of this to other people. And really it hasn't been transformed to good. You transformed them. You emitted some negative energy off to them because at the point where you, when you went to them, it wasn't transformed yet. So you didn't, you didn't, um, gave them some of your weight. You emitted some of your weight. You transformed some of your negative weight off to them. Some of your negative weight to other tasks. Not only did you drop some of your loads off at places that were not efficient, not effective, and transforming the bad to good, but you also, you wasn't on time. God is like, now I know what I allowed you to be tested with. I know when I gave the permission for it to be done, and I know when it was executed, you didn't come to me first. Where did you stop? You, you, not only did you make some pit stops, but you short, you short of the 100 pounds that I allowed to be dropped off on you. Now, the importance of this is, you know, you may look at it and you say, why does a good God allow this to happen? Well, this is how he's redeeming what has been perverted in the world. This is how he's transforming. This is how he's bringing about his glory. So mm -hmm. in this world where you have Satan trying to make the good things that God made evil, you have God trying to redeem the good things that he made evil back good. And we partner with him as transformers to, to make that happen. So when something hits us in life, when a weight is dropped off, God is, 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 
is expecting us to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. He's expecting us to come unto him, all you who are labor, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's expecting us to trade our burdens for his yoke that is light as light and easy. So the thing is, we can't receive his yoke that's light and easy unless we exchange what we've been carrying for his yoke, unless we boldly come before his throne of grace and and drop all that is on us first you can't carry the yoke of the world and receive god's yoke that is light and easy so you have to exchange what you've been carrying for what he wants you to receive and what he's saying is by the time we come to him in prayer not only did we not seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and let him add his yoke to us as light and easy But you didn't drop some of it off. You didn't drop some of the weight off. You didn't disperse it. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be, you know, shining his light into dark places. We're supposed to be emptying ourselves of worldly things, of heavy things, of dark things. And we're supposed to be being filled up with his love, filled up with his peace, filled up with his joy, filled up with self-control, filled up with faith filled up with meekness, kindness, goodness. We're supposed to be emptying ourselves of the, we're supposed to be being purged and sanctified and cleansed by the word of God of worldly things so that we can be filled with the fruits of the spirit. But we're not doing it with zest. We're not doing it with, with zest and we're not doing, we're doing it double minded. You know, we're doing it still allowing worldly things to occupy, to, to function as pacifiers and to function as a, um, a false sense of relief, a false sense of security. So, um, and when, uh, what year was that? Maybe like 2012 or 2013, I looked at, Elise is 10 years old now, but in 2012 or 2013, so when she was like three or four, I think, I don't know, maybe around four years old maybe five years. I don't remember. But you know, this song came to me and a part of the song is say, we all are transformers. We make good anything. We all have a purpose. It begins with a dream. Don't underestimate the powers you possess. Miracles are made each day when you release greatness. But the line I want you to think about is we all are transformers. We make good anything. Everything that hit us in life is not going to be good at the point that it that it it um comes upon us at the point mm-hmm. that it crosses with us or crosses our path. But God expects that at the point that it comes to us, at the point that it encounters us, that Through the Holy Spirit, we will send it up to him and allow him to transform it into good. Okay. Allow him to be glorified in it. Allow him to be glorified through us by what we offer up to him. So some people think that they have to have something good to offer God. Yeah. Offer him your praise, but God is expecting us to offer up to him some things that are ugly. He's expecting us to offer up some things to him that are dark. He's expecting us to offer up some things to him that are heavy. A bird just came and flew in the window. He's expecting us to offer up some Mm -hmm. things to him so that he can be glorified and them being made good and them being made light and them being made whole. He's expecting, remember, a contrite, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He will not refuse. He's mm-hmm. still expecting some people to release some mm-hmm. things to him. Okay. So I hope that the message, I thank you, Father God, for the message, for the revelation, Lord. Mm-hmm. I pray that your children will taste and see that you are good. I pray that they will try you at your word, Lord God. I pray that they will come unto you, those who labor and are heavy laden and find a resting place in you. I pray that they will find out that they are a transformer. Hallelujah, Lord God. Jesus, 
I, you know what needs to be done. I don't know, Lord, but you mm-hmm. know, and I just pray that you will send it forth, Lord. I pray that they will see that your grace is sufficient, Father God. I pray mm-hmm. that they will see that in their weakness, your strength is perfected. I pray that they will allow you to show them, to teach them what it means to worship you in truth and and in spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you that you are good, Lord. I thank you that your thoughts and your ways are not like ours, that they are higher. I thank you that your plans for us are good and not evil, Lord. I thank you that our suffering has an expected end. Hallelujah. And it's when we come to the end of ourselves, Lord. It's when we come boldly before your throne of grace. Hallelujah. Thank you that you empathize with us in our weaknesses. Hallelujah. Thank you that you intercede for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So really, I'm encouraging somebody, however something is hitting you, let God know that it's heavy. It hurts. It's not what you expected. And um, it's not a lack of faith, but it's just, Mm -hmm. it's truly casting all your cares upon him. Because what he's saying is these things cannot be carried unto the next level. You cannot carry these things into the next level. These things were placed on you, not only to be transformed from evil to good, from dark to light, from, from broken to whole, but to also take you higher to a higher level of faith in him, a higher level of character in him. Okay. And you can't receive what he has for you until you drop this weight off on him. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Cry out, cry out, cry out. Um, go through and search out in the Bible, all the instances in which people cried out to God God is expecting some of us to come to the end of ourselves, come to the end of our hope in our own strength, come to the end of our own expectations so that we can receive what he has for us, so that we can receive what he has for us. Hallelujah. Remember, another story that came to my mind was this about this being the 11th hour, which this is the 11th month of the year. About just being 11th hour, that hour when he went in and, and recruited that last bit of work, workers who hadn't been given work and he let them work and they received the same reward as those who had been working um, from that first hour. So, um, I don't know, it's in my mm-hmm. spirit heavy. It's in my spirit heavy. But I pray that today when you hear Jesus knocking at your door, that you will harden not your heart, that you won't think that God is evil, that you'll trust just for one moment that he truly does have good plans for you. And they're on the other side of your fears. They're on the other side of your hesitation. They're on the other side of anger. They're on the other side of bitterness. If you offer him up fear, he'll give you courage. Mm -hmm. If you offer him up the hate that you've been harboring in your heart, he will give you love. If you offer him up doubt, he will give you hope and faith. If you offer up sorrow, he will give you rejoicing. You have to trust that he is good. And when you partner with his word, when you partner with his word, when you partner with his word, you become transformed Mm -hmm. and a transformer. All right. So be blessed in Jesus name. Amen.